Butters is a lovable dope that I cannot seem to get enough of. Lulu, Lulu, I've got some apples. Lulu, Lulu, you got some too. Lulu, Lulu, let's get together. Take off our clothes and Lulu, Lulu. Today, I just wanted to map his character progression across the entire show and put it in a linear timeline. I hate intros, and uh, this video is already long enough, so let's just get into it. Butters, while existing in the first couple of seasons, doesn't really have any roles whatsoever, so I'm lumping season one and two together. He only appears in the backgrounds of these episodes, if that, and uh, there's nothing we can really say about his character at this point, but he is there. Hell, his name wasn't even set in stone yet, because in Conjoined Fetus Lady, they literally call him Swanson. Jordan, Swanson, pull forward! We need backup! We're losing men fast out here! It feels so wrong to me for Butters to be called anything other than Butters, but yeah, basically he doesn't have a character until season three. This is the episode we see Butters' character truly brought to form and actually explored. God, I'm, I'm taking this off. I'm, it's so hot. God, I hate the summer. Winter please snow on me now i'm not gonna take it off completely because that's unfashionable but you know just a pure white shirt i gotta i gotta look somewhat presentable to you guys here we see stan brought to the basement of a party against his wishes well it'll be good for you to make new friends you can't just hang out with your buddy kyle all the time people think you guys are you know funny he's greeted by pip dougie and of course the main focus of this episode this video Butters. Hey Stan, well I sure am glad you're here cause then we'll have even more fun than we than we was having before. We, we, we were having an awfully good time before you showed up too, however. There is a ton to dissect about Butters from this episode and a lot of his groundwork and foundation is laid here. So I guess I'm just gonna start listing off what's established about him. First off, Butters is a loser, pretty much. And that's how he's established right off the bat. We'll be upstairs if you need anything, Stan. Dad, you can't leave me here. These guys are total Melvins. Have fun, Stanley. No, Mom, please. They're the geekiest kids at our school. We'll come get you kids when the meteor shower starts. The image of him being a loser is helped by the inclusion of Pip in this episode, who was already an established loser in the series by this point. So by associating Butters with Pip, you kind of already get the general gist of the type of person he is. The difference between Pip and Butters, though, is that Butters is just way more likable and a lot more silly. Neato. Hey, you know what we could do with these lady clothes, huh? Well, well we could play Charlie's Angels. Oh, dude, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, yes, let's. Can I be Jacqueline Smith? Can I? No, I get to be Jacqueline Smith. See, I thought of Charlie's Angels. I get to be Jacqueline Smith because I thought of it. This is where I'm going to do a slight detour to talk about Pip because I think his character... It's kind of the predecessor for Butters, so I think it's kind of important to talk about Pip. The introduction of Butters is definitely the beginning of the end for Pip, especially when they're in an episode right side by side, so you can clearly see which one is more compelling and which one is more interesting, and that one is obviously Butters. Listen, I don't hate Pip as much as some people do, all right? I know it's like a general fact that, oh, Pip's the worst, worst character in the show. I don't agree with that. I think that he's boring, sure. But there are way worse characters. Oh my god. How am I supposed to make a video when you're being so delinquent? Unruly. Unruly. But yeah, I don't hate Pip. But with that being said, Butters does do his role a lot better. That role being the lovable loser, which Butters occupies beautifully. His delivery alone is just adorable, especially in these early seasons. Well, I don't know what our mission is. Do you know what our mission is, little first grade kid? How should I know? Oh dear, we're Charlie's Angels, but we don't have a mission. Hey, that's because we need Bosley. Bosley always told the angels what their mission was. Remember Bosley? Well, why, why, we need somebody to be Bosley. I love his old voice so much, man. I, I love it so freaking cute. Uh, sorry, y'all. Uh, my bad. But, but listen to it. Isn't it adorable? All right, all right. Here's your mission. In 10 minutes, this room is going to fill up with water and drown everybody. You have to find me a way out of this room, fast. Oh, that's a spell. Mission. Well, what are we waiting for? We gotta find a way out of this room, by guy, or else we're all gonna get drowned. Come on, angels. Anyways, uh, 
back to the analysis. Another thing that's loosely established in this episode is his relationship with Dougie, who ends up being his sidekick and second in command in his Professor Chaos era. Now, there's nothing explicitly set up that sets up Professor Chaos in this episode, obviously, but they're working together, and I have to imagine that's why the writers chose Dougie as Butter's sidekick. Another thing that's established about Butters is his trait of having a little bit of a backbone. Let me handle this, Stan. Now listen up and listen good, everyone. Well, I'm awful disappointed in you drinking and carrying on this way, but you, you should be ashamed of yourselves. If you don't get outside right now and tell those army guys you're not religious fantastics, there, well, there's gonna be heck to pay. Uh, heck, I tell ya. <laughs> Come on, we're gonna have to go tell them ourselves. This is the thing that separates Butters from Pip, who does not have a spine at all. This is why he soon fills the role of the lovable loser and takes over Pip's spot, because he does it a lot more effectively, and he, he's just... He's just more likable. Plus, it helps that he's just adorable in a way that Pip is not. I guess that's genuinely also another trait you can consider early on that's established. The fact that he's just so freaking cute. In these early seasons especially, I think he reminds me the most of just a genuine kid. Like, all the kids are kids, obviously, but Butter's demeanor is clearly the most childlike and innocent, and I think it gives him a sense of wholesomeness that the other characters just don't provide. Him just generally being wholesome becomes a huge part of who he is, and that's established right off the bat in this episode. Another thing that's established is that Butters is often the one doing the most dangerous job. Oh well, no, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure at all. Well, what am I doing again? We're just gonna slide you down this rope, and then you gotta get our exclusive video to that reporter down there. Well, that sounds awful dangerous. Well, I don't know about this. I think I'll reconsider. Yep, I think reconsidering is the thing to do right now. Whoa! This isn't something that's played up a lot in this episode, but the fact that he's usually the one put in the most dangerous roles is something that does get played up in the future. Ultimately, this episode lays the groundwork and explores his character in a really, really effective way. A lot of who he'll become in the future is planted in this episode, and it soon blossoms into what is my favorite character in the show. At, at least early on, and I'll explain how that changes later. Here, we see Butters truly established as the punching bag. In this episode, we see Nambla infiltrate South Park and attempt to have relations with the young boys of the town. I, I found a little eight-year-old named Butters. He's a beautiful, bright little boy. Well, well, I sure am, I guess. And his skin is as soft as fresh linen. Oh. That seems kind of weird. Well, my skin is springtime soft, I suppose. Poor little man, he's just too innocent for this world. But basically, they end up in a chase scene where Cartman sends Butters in to placate the depraved perverts. Well, look, those perverts aren't going to rest until they've made love to one of us, right? So somebody's just going to have to go out there and, and take one for the team. And I think, in all fairness, it should be Butters. Huh? Well, why me? Now, are you a team player or not? Well, sure, I'm a team player, I guess. Well, Butters, there is no I in team. You mean to expect me to go out there and let all those uh, horny old men have their way with my fragile person? Well, just what team is this anyway? Just go, Butters, we're running out of time. Oh, uh, all right then. Luckily, he doesn't have to be the one who deals with this because Stuart ends up getting the abuse, but I think this scene highlights a lot about Butters. It shows that while I'd say he does have a bit of a backbone, he is by far the most naive and manipulated person in the show, and it's not even close. His sweet nature allows him to be used by people like Carmen quite a lot, and this is something that happens time and time again. Overall, a few important tidbits are established in a short time in this episode, and I thought it was definitely worth mentioning. So I'm going to talk about the majority of Season 5 in its own section here, because while he does have a few things that are worth talking about, most of it's not worth individually dissecting like I did before. But there definitely are some tidbits that are revealed about the inner workings of his mind in this season, and I am going to talk about those. In Super Best Friends, the band episode, we see Butters have a line about falling asleep to the sound of his own screams. Do you consider yourselves to be happy? I don't think I'm very happy. I always fall asleep to the sound of my own screams. Right. 
See, the reason that you are... And then I always get woken up in the morning by the sound of my own screams. Do you think I'm unhappy? Wait, the, the point is... This is the first glimpse we get of another huge part of his character, that being his absolutely insane amount of trauma. Clearly, he's not mentally okay, and uh, we'll soon get into why he's not mentally okay, because there is a pretty valid reason for that. Another time we see the seeds of a big character trait developing is in How to Eat With Your Butt, where he gets grounded for the first time, for a very unreasonable reason, I'll add. Uh, I can't, fellas. I'm grounded for looking stupid in my school picture. But dude, you gotta see, it's hysterical. Butters can't come out and play, boys. He thinks it's funny to look like a jackass in his school pictures that I have to pay for. Uh, but I told you, Mom, I didn't mean to look like a jackass. It just happened. You made a goofy face. No, that's just what I look like. Him getting grounded by his parents for quite silly reasons, becomes a huge prominent part of his character. There's also the episode Kenny Dies where Butters gives Kenny a nice card and calls him his friend, which is the first time we see Butters give Kenny such regard, and Kenny seems to be the person Butters ends up feeling closest towards as the show goes on. So I said most of season five because, um, this episode is definitely worth looking at on an individual level. Here, we're presented with Butter's home life, which by far is the worst on the show. And trust me, that's saying a lot when we're talking about South Park here. This episode starts off by reinforcing the sweet nature of Butter's as he wraps his dad's anniversary present. Once again, he's adorable. Another thing that's shown is that his moral compass is pretty solid too, as he instantly has hangups about spying on his dad to see what he's gonna get his mother. Uh, but ain't that kind of like fibbing? Nevertheless, he's eventually convinced because, you know, it's Butters. He's a very convincible person. And we see that his dad is going to interesting places. Hmm. Dad's going to see a movie. How nice. So yeah, Butters' dad is, uh, not very faithful and, uh, he appears to be homosexual or bisexual. So, you know, I mean, that doesn't really matter. He's still cheating on his wife. So, I mean, that's the most important thing here. Butters reports this to his mom in the naive way he views the world, and it creates a really funny scene. Wait a minute. What was the movie called? Fishing Fireman 9. I've never seen one through eight. Oh my God. But it must have been a real short movie though, because that came out like 10 minutes later. It must have been a sad film too, because he had a bunch of tissue paper with him when he came out. Poor old dad, movie really got to him. Butters, where did daddy go after the movie? To the gym. To the gym? Yeah, the White Swallow Spa. Ah! Yep, he went there and he wrestled with all kinds of guys. He wasn't too good though. This one black guy had him pinned down for 15 minutes straight. But yeah, his mother ends up going insane, and she comes to the realization that- I don't think daddy's shopping. I think daddy's going out wrestling again. Paint. Paint. Never be clean. Must kill. The only way. Must kill Butters. So yeah, neither of his parents seem to be the best role models here. This is the first time we see his parents as what they will become, which is genuinely evil people. Like just genuinely evil. In my opinion, they are the second most evil people in the show, and they're only number two because South Park literally has the most evil character ever conceived in cartoon history. And when I say that, I of course mean Mr. Twig. Screw that guy. Mr. Head is a two-time and whore, and now we all learn from Mr. Twig. But Mr. Twig sucks. Yeah. yeah! Now that I think about it, actually, Mr. Garrison's probably more evil than them, but Third place is still a pretty high honor in South Park. So after his mom tries to kill him, and his mom basically saying she was going to kill him, Butters doesn't even realize this because of how naive he is. It just goes right over his head. So we cut back to Steven and Linda Stotch, where we see them trying to think of a way to cover up this murder. Unbeknownst to them, he was alive, and he finds his way back home and gives them this lovely speech. Now gosh darn it you, you listen here. Now I am sick of these harmless lies and little white lies. You know, you can call a shovel an ice cream machine, but it's still a shovel, Mom and Dad. And you can call a lie whatever you want, but it's still a no good stinking lie. And when you start covering up one lie with another lie, why, well, that's when you get into real trouble. But I've just about had it up to here with you two. This once again shows his strong moral compass, and the best way to describe Butters and his intentions at this point is 
very pure. He knows right from wrong, and he has the ability to stand up for what is morally right. While yes, he is unbelievably prone to manipulation from outside forces, in his heart of hearts, he knows what is true. He's pure, innocent, and he seeks out what's right. In the end, we see Butter's parents admit everything, and uh, well, Butter's being the naive boy he is, He's kind of shocked by it. I was going to gay movie and bathhouses and having sex with random men who were complete strangers. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> and when I found out, I went crazy. I went crazy and I drove my son into the lake to kill him. Uh, kill me? Jesus Christ! Butters is very prominent in season six, especially the early parts of season six. So I'm going to do a light brushing on the majority of these episodes before I do a deep dive into one of them. So we see in the first episode of the season that Butters replaces Kenny as a core member of the group, which is obviously very important for Butters' character. We see he's not really respected by the other boys as they don't even call Butters by his real name. Hey, fellas. Hey, Kenny. No gosh darn it, my name's not Kenny. Kenny's dead, and you're old enough to learn to deal with that. Okay, not Kenny. This shows that he's still very much an outcast, even though he's a part of the main four, and the boys just seem to take advantage of him and use his good nature to manipulate him. Like in that same episode, we see them tell him to gain an obscene amount of weight just so that they can have him lose it all and they could do commercials like Jared from Subway. Carmen especially goes out of his way to make Butter's life miserable time and time again, which becomes a very common practice. I'm just checking in on you, Butters. Hey, do I hear the television? We told you no television while you're grounded. Oh, gee whiz, I'm not watching television, Dad. I'm just laying around jacking it. Jacking it? Jacking what? Well, my hot spicy boner, of course, Dad. What? Are you trying to get yourself in more trouble with that kind of language? Ah, oh, loosen up, you bloody vaginal belch. Oh, you are gonna get it, mister. You just wait till I get home. Bring it on, queer bait. In Aspen, we see Carmen bully Butters, even when the other boys aren't on board with it, which shows Butters has a particular liking to messing with Butters specifically. But even at that, the other boys aren't really much better when it comes to their treatment of Butters in this season. Like in Freak Strike, where they manipulate Butters into embarrassing himself on national TV for their own profit. Kenny would have done it. So, I told you guys before, I'm not Kenny. We know. Believe me, we know. We're reminded every day that you're not Kenny because Kenny was cool. Yeah, God, I wish Kenny was still alive. He'd put balls on his chin. He was such an awesome friend. But yeah, the boys aren't really good to Butters. But Cartman especially is really bad to Butters. And that's something that's important to know. One thing I didn't mention about Butters' character yet that I feel like I should also know is the fact that he's incredibly hard on himself to an unfair degree. Often we see Butters blaming himself in situations where he's the victim. Serves me right. Putting balls on my trend and lying about it. Why, I should be grounded for a month. Why do I do these things? Why can't I behave myself? He does this all the time, and his anxiety about behaving and not getting grounded is 100% a trauma response, which is caused by his terrible parents. He manages to be the brightest beacon of light in the darkest cave. And while obviously in South Park it's played for laughs and stuff like that, if you truly think about it, his situation is pretty damn dark, to be honest. So in a welcome change, we finally see Butters try to take some control back of his own life with the awesome, amazing, and lovely alter ego of Professor Chaos. In this episode, he's fired from the friend group, even though he's been nothing but awesome, amazing, sweet, just perfect. So really, screw you, Cartman. Screw you, Stan. Screw you, Kyle. But after he's kicked out, he has a little villain arc and creates a recurring alter ego that is the beginning of... Of Professor Chaos. I would say that this is the episode that starts the slow process of Butters becoming a bit more assertive in the show and in his character. And while, yeah, he's still pure at this point, very pure at this point, he's starting to want to have a little more control. His idea of fighting back is still very innocent and still very childlike. Uh, waitress, I actually ordered the chicken soup. This is minestrone. Yeah, I have the minestrone over here. <laughs> Hi, I'm 
and Professor Chaos. And now this puny world will bow down to me. <laughs> this episode doesn't change who he is, but he does admit that he's been mistreated. And I see this alter ego, Professor Chaos, as a form of escape for him. An escape from a world of abuse to a world where he actually has some control of his life. And maybe that's a stretch. That could very well just be me stretching it out, but that was my personal interpretation of it. If his character existed in any other show besides South Park, it would be incredibly depressing. But because of the absurdist nature and extreme nature of South Park, the funniness does kind of outweigh it here, but his situation is incredibly dark. That's why I read it that way. And like I said, maybe I'm just stretching it, but I kind of felt like it was more of an escapism type thing for him. One thing that also happens in this episode is that he teams up with Dougie, who I stated before is another outcast. And obviously they continue to work together throughout this. It's also shown that he has little hamster minions, which is pretty cool. And I looked it up. These are hamsters. I know I messed up in the Craig video because I said, oh, Craig has a little hamster. And I got 500 million comments that were like, Actually, no, it's a guinea pig. It's a guinea pig. Well, guess what? This is a hamster. These are hamsters. I looked it up. I'm right. You can't correct me. You can't. You can't correct me. You can't. Anyway, uh, Professor Chaos, uh, very important for Butter's character. And obviously, uh, that's why I mention it. So Butters continues to have prominence as, I'd say, a main character at this point in the show. And he, this is something that he continues to have across the entire show, like very main character-esque roles. I'd say he's the second best written character in the entire show, in my opinion. The best written character obviously being Pip. Oh wait, I already made that type of misdirection joke, didn't I? God, I'm unoriginal. Sue me. But Butters doesn't do anything too outside the scope of what's already developed about his character in these episodes. We don't really learn anything new or nothing really major happens to his character, which is fine, of course, but it just means that there's not a ton to talk about here. He continues the Professor Chaos route and the Simpsons already did it, and we see him go insane trying to be original with his dastardly plans. There was a time where he became a porn fiend after the boys showed him a porno under the pretense that they thought it was Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Yeah. Butters, what the hell are you doing? In Future Self and Me, we see Butters once again is a very naive boy as his parents trick him into believing that his future self is really him. They've all been lying to us this whole time. This whole time. I wonder if my future self knows anything about this. Hey, maybe my future self remembers this happening and can shed some light on the subject. Butters, don't you get it? Those assholes aren't our future selves. Our parents hired them to make us more motivated. But, but then why did they come back to the past? They didn't come back to the past, you dumbass. They're actors. Also off topic, this episode does have one of my favorite jokes in the entire show. And I'm going to show it because this is my episode, my video. I could do what I want. Wait right here, Stan. I warn you, you may not like what you're about to see. We have to teach our parents a lesson. Show them they can't just play with our emotions like that. <laughs> now you know my terrible secret. You're gay? Fine if you're gay, Butters, I don't care. Huh? No, I'm Professor Chaos. But we have to teach our parents a lesson, Butters. We're running away. Help me find the perfect place to run away to. Mm. Uh, maybe I used a little too much silver. We also see him get interrogated into believing he committed a crime, even though he absolutely didn't in toilet paper, which is behavior we see all too often. He's frequently gaslit, and because of his low self-confidence, he tends to defer to others and believe what other people say about him. This leads to him being, once again, a punching bag, and it's often how he becomes the fall guy in most situations when people don't want to be blamed. It's also revealed that he loves art class in this episode, which I think is pretty evident by the fact that he's actually a pretty good artist, you know, and that's shown throughout the show. We finally see him swear in Christian Hard Rock towards Cartman. Fuck you, Eric. This is definitely a step, because by this point, We've never seen Butters swear at all in the entire show, and that's in stark contrast to everyone else, obviously. Once again, it's his purity on display. He's especially childlike, even in comparison with the other children in the show. He even has the stupid honesty of a child, which is something that is shown quite a bit. We're not really Christian, we're just pretending we are. 
He's just incredibly innocent. But at this point, he does seem to be losing some of that innocence as the show goes on, which can be indicated by the fact that he swore at Cartman. This is a theme, and this is something that does happen as the show progresses. Casa Bonita, Casa Bonita. What would I do without you? Matt and Trey actually owning like the real Casa Bonita is kind of awesome. I don't know. Maybe if I get big enough, I'll do like a cute little vlog and I'll go over there, you know, just for just for funsies. But I don't know with the cost of travel. Maybe not. Back on topic. Casa Bonita is a top tier South Park episode. And in this episode, we see the dynamic between Cartman and Butters expanded greatly. Cartman being as manipulative as he is and Butters being as manipulatable as he is, is a match made in heaven for the comedy of this show. Cartman manipulates Butters in this episode by trying to make him go missing for a while so he can take his spot at Kyle's birthday party at Gas Bonita since he is not initially invited. This actually shows a bit of warming up from the main boys besides Cartman to Butters since the fact that Kyle invited Butters to his birthday party shows us that Kyle might see him as like a genuine friend at this point. The fact that Kyle picked Butters over Cartman isn't that meaningful, but the fact that he picked Butters at all is kind of meaningful and it's kind of nice. It shows that Kyle at least likes him enough to invite him to his birthday party, which is cool. Of course, Cartman doesn't have any of this and he manipulates Butters into going into hiding. This continues and we see Cartman constantly moving Butters in more and more ridiculous ways to avoid him getting found. Eventually, Cartman does get invited because Butters is missing and he also manipulated Kyle into believing that he changed. But as soon as Cartman gets to his destination, Butters is found. Boys, they found Butters, he's okay. Oh, awesome, I knew he'd turn up. Yes, Eric Cartman is with us. Why? Oh, really? What? Yes, I will certainly let him know. Thank you. Well, it appears that Eric here is responsible for Butters missing because he wanted to go to Casa Bonita. Carmen and Butters have a really great and unique dynamic in this show, and it becomes the focal point for some of the best episodes in the series. Well, before, yes, Carmen and Butters did have a bit of a dynamic. We see them talking, interacting, and we see Cartman even bullying Butters a bit. But this is the first episode where we see Butters and Cartman solely working off each other, which is a very, very, very different thing. That's why I say this episode expands their dynamic because, well, yeah, they did have a dynamic before. This episode creates the formula of an episode that stars both Cartman and Butters together. Even though I'd say that this episode more stars Cartman more than anyone else, the fact that they star in a plot line together is very important and it becomes a very prominent role that Butters sees himself in throughout the show and the future. So you may notice it's a little darker now. That's because I took a little break. If you can't tell from the length of this video, this took a long time to record. So, you know, took a little break, but I'm back and we're going to talk about raisins now. So the episode raisins provides us with a pretty good glimpse of Butters and his mindset as a person. In this episode, we see Butters and the gang try to cheer up Stan after he goes through a breakup with Wendy. They end up taking Stan to raisins and, uh, this is where Butters plot comes into the fold. So the girls at Raisins flirt with the customers and Butters ends up falling for it hook, line, and sinker. Aw, well when am I gonna get to see you again? When do you wanna see me? As soon as possible. Oh my god. Here, we left you a tip already, but here's another five dollars. Aw, you are such a sweetie. Come here, you. <sighs> <laughs> Obviously, he's a very naive boy. This is not new information. So he ends up thinking he's actually in a relationship with this Raisins girl rather than just being a customer. And he devotes all of his time, money, and energy to her when she doesn't really care that much about him. Eventually, he does tell his parents and they realize what's going on. Oh boy, I think I know what's happened. Our son hasn't learned yet that girls will pretend to like him for money. After his parents tell Butters what's going on, which for once is one actually good thing that they did. But they tell Butters what's going on and he doesn't believe them and he's like, this is my girlfriend and the Raisins girl obviously denies this because that's not true. Butters of course takes this as breaking up rather than an acknowledgement of reality and uh, he gets quite sad. We see him approached by Stan where he gives us some insight on his emotions. Uh, no thanks, I love life. Huh? But you just got dumped. Well, yeah, and I'm sad. 
But at the same time, I'm really happy that something can make me feel that sad. It's like, it, it, it makes me feel alive, you know? It makes me feel human. The only way I could feel this sad now is if I felt something really good before. So I have to take the bad with the good. So I guess what I'm feeling is like a beautiful sadness. I guess that sounds stupid. Yeah. No. No, Butters, that doesn't sound stupid at all. Well, thanks for offering to let me in your clique, guys. <laughs> but to be honest, I'd rather be a crying little pussy than a faggy goth kid. We'll see you, Stan. I think this speech doesn't only explain how he stays pure in the face of breakup. I think it can explain a lot about his general mindset when it comes to his pretty horrific life. Even when he's facing harsh, harsh adversity and abuse, he still maintains that positive attitude we all know him for, and it's incredibly admirable. Despite his circumstances, he continues to stay resilient, and he continues to have faith in humanity. At least right now. Once again, he's certainly on that path of losing a bit of his purity, of losing a bit of his faith in humanity, but he's still very much pure at this point in the series and still very much a lovable little guy. Butters has many prominent roles in season eight, which in my opinion is the best season in the show. I don't think that's a terribly controversial opinion. In Good Time with Weapons, we see Butters as the ultimate punching bag here. He doesn't get a single break in this one and it's, it's pretty messed up, but I love it. We see the trademark manipulatable naive nature on full display in this one. In the episode You Got F'd in the A, we see more of Butters' trauma, which is always lovely. So not only does he have an awful home life, he feels responsible for the death of eight people, and he's just an ultimate punching bag, too. This guy is the definition of PTSD, oh my. So with Osimo, I didn't know if I wanted to talk about this episode individually or just group it with all the other season 8 episodes, but I felt like there was enough new information revealed in this episode for me to cover it individually. So this is once again an episode where we see Cartman trying to get one over on Butters, but this time it actually has a different result than it usually does. So Cartman tries to act like a robot to get Butters secrets, which he does end up getting, but Butters has a trick up his sleeve. Yeah, and he's never gonna get me again, cause what Cartman doesn't know is that I know one of his secrets. What? When Carmen is playing all alone in his backyard, he likes to dress up like Britney Spears and pretend he's her. He sings and dances around with a life-size cutout of Justin Timberlake. You saw that? Yeah, and I videotaped him doing it. Butters standing up to Carmen in this way is something that we haven't really seen up to this point. Sure, I mean, we've seen Butters curse out Carmen, and we've seen Butters, you know, deny Carmen. But we've never seen him actually create a situation where he has all the cards, he has the control over Cartman, which is pretty cool to see. It shows Butters being a bit more proactive in defending himself against Cartman, and I think this is something that he does a lot more frequently past this point. This is just another step of him becoming more assertive and taking more precaution in defending himself, but every step is worth mentioning, every step is worth noting. Butters is still very naive and childlike, however, and he thinks Osimo is a real robot, but his naivety ends up helping him here for once, which is pretty awesome to see. Butters goes around town in later LA with his robot friend, and this exhausts Cartman. Osimo! Uh, uh, Osimo is coming! Come on, Osimo! We're gonna go a sightseeing! Uh. He ends up getting found by a movie studio, and Carmen becomes a little idea machine. Just to remind you how pure Butters is, instead of taking the money from the ideas, he literally donates every cent of it to needy kids. So. Yeah, he's still incredibly pure. Eventually, Cartman gets found out, and everyone laughs at his little video. I've made it no secret that I love this episode in particular. Hell, I made a video about it. If you want to watch a more detailed explanation about this specific episode, rather than Butter's character and role in this episode, watch that video after this one. But... Yeah, I love this episode. This is my favorite episode in the whole show. It's my favorite episode because it's nice for once for Butter's naivety and natural trust to actually pan out for him. And this episode is one of those examples. Cartman 100% brings his own demise here. And it's really nice and satisfying seeing someone serve their own comeuppance that they deserve. I'm gonna cover a very good amount of ground here because there isn't a ton 
with butters in these seasons and by that i mean mainly season 10 and i just wanted to include the other seasons in this section for organization so yeah there's still very much to say so i'm just gonna start blabbering on in stupid spoiled horror video playset we see butters once again in the position of being a punching bag and having amazing parents well your offer is enticing i'm afraid we just can't sell you our son for 200 million dollars It'll have to be 250 million cash up front. Oh, hamburgers! Yay, Mr. Biggles, you're mine forever! The fact that they're willing to sell their own son shows that Butters is very replaceable to them. Even after Butters pleads to stay, they just don't listen to him. In fact, they do one worse than not listening to him. They make it his fault. All right, Butters, tell you what. If you can raise the 250 million dollars yourself, you can stay. Well, how am I supposed to make that kind of money? It's called working, young man. Your grandfather was a coal miner for 50 years. He never complained. Get out there and start digging. They are genuinely evil people. It's that simple. Now, Butters doesn't end up getting sold to Paris Hilton because she ends up, uh, let's just say getting swallowed in this episode. His parents end up grounding him because of this. And of course, Butters blames himself. So, so that's it? No $200 million? Well, Butters, I hope you're happy. I'm a bad bear. I'm a very bad old bear. You're a grounded old bear. This is nothing new, but one thing it does show for certain is that Butters is replaceable to his parents. It shows that their love for him is very twisted and conditional, unlike the love a parent should provide. Now, I say love because I do think they love him, but that doesn't mean that they care about him. And that's, there's a distinction there. And I know that sounds a bit confusing, but I will explain it. Narcissists experience love. They experience love and it's very different from the way a normal person experiences love, unrecognizable from the way a normal person experiences love, but they still feel it. If I had to give Butter's parents a diagnosis, uh, you know, little armchair psychologist here, that's the one I would give them. I, I would call them a narcissist. It's shown time and time again that they view Butters more as a possession rather than an individual with emotions and feelings. They want their property to act accordingly, which is shown by the fact that they exercise excessive control over Butters. I think they view him as a possession and property, and I think that's how they love him. And that's just my humble opinion. You know, that's my humble opinion. I'm no psychologist, I'm a 19 year old on YouTube who watches a lot of South Park, but that's what I've dissected from their behavior. Now I'm not gonna get too deep in their psyche because this is a video about Butters, but I think it is important understanding where they're coming from because Butters, you know, is the offspring of these people. That was a tad of a tangent, but I hope it was somewhat insightful to you guys. The Death of Eric Cartman is another episode where Butters gets this starring role. Cartman ends up getting ignored by the other school children, and this leads him to believe that he's dead because there's no other explanation why people would ignore Cartman. Of course, Butters wasn't filled in on this plan, so he greets Cartman, and this leads to Cartman telling him he's a ghost, which makes Butters a little freaked out. I'm dead. <laughs> One thing about Butters that I haven't mentioned yet is that he is a massive scaredy cat too, which mixed with his naivety is kind of a deadly combo. Granted, you could also say he's a scaredy cat because of his naivety. I don't know, those kind of go hand in hand. Butters' parents, of course, don't really help him in any front when he goes to them about the ghost. There's plenty of real things to be scared of, like super aids. <laughs> super aids? That's right. A new form of AIDS which is resistant to drugs. Just one teaspoon of Super AIDS in your butt and you're dead in three years. Ah! Oh, Jesus! Just give the kid more fear because that's what he needs. But eventually Cartman convinces Butters to help him and Butters helps Cartman atone for his sins so he'll go to the afterlife. This eventually leads to Cartman giving Butters an apology. Butters, I'm sorry if I ever did anything to hurt you. Oh, that's okay, Eric. Just a wholesome little guy, him accepting Cartman's apology, even though he probably shouldn't, to be honest, let's just be real. When this doesn't end up working for Eric, he tries a few other things, which eventually leads to him and Butters saving a group of hostages. And then eventually everyone's like, oh wow, you're actually a decent person, Cartman. We're, we're done ignoring you, you know, because 
Of course, he's a decent person. He did it out of the goodness of his heart, of course. Butters and Cartman have a cooperative dynamic in this episode, and to be honest, it's kind of nice, even though Cartman's involvement in it is 100% self-centered, but still. Also, Butters goes through an especially traumatic scene in this episode when his parents send him to the doctor. <laughs> Like that's probably the, one of the worst things that's happened to butters at this point a lot of bad things have happened to the guy though so i don't know another episode i want to mention from season nine is margarine where butters is put in a quite interesting situation so in this episode we see butters infiltrate the girl's sleepover by becoming a girl so basically the boys choose butters because of course they choose butters with the mission of getting a fortune teller from a girl's sleepover and what they tell him to do to do this is uh fake his death and reemerge as a girl which is you know not i mean that's just a small task for butters at this point his parents are a little distraught when he fakes his death jesus christ ah! oh my god it seems like this that kind of illustrate what i was saying before about how his parents feel about him i do think they love him i just don't think that they actually love him in a way that a parent should. So Butters goes on as Margarine and the boys basically will him into the slumber party by pretending to be his parents and asking Heidi's mom if she could come. Butters ends up getting made fun of by the girls and this leads to him getting a little sad. We think you're great. You think I'm ugly. <laughs> poor guy. Um, or I, I guess poor girl in this instance. After this, we see the girls actually start to feel bad and they give Butters a makeover, which he enjoys thoroughly. Eventually though, he does take the fortune device and he goes back home. But uh, there's something that I haven't been talking about with this episode. So Butters' dad, thinking that Butters is dead, has been trying to bring Butters back to life. And he believes that he brought Butters back to life as a demon. Little boy, what are you doing down here? There you go, son. Eat. What are we becoming? Come on. Don't watch it feed. Can't I just have some spaghetti out? But yeah, overall, this episode is pretty cute, honestly. It's really nice seeing Butters actually have fun at the sleepover and enjoy his time with the girls. Unfortunately, stuff like that's always fleeting for Butters as he ends up being put back into his terrible situation. But it's nice seeing him be in a healthy situation, a healthy friendship where people aren't trying to manipulate him for once, which is, it's nice. It's nice to see. Some more small things to mention here. Like in the episode, The Return of Chef, we hear Butters say his uncle Bud molested him, which, you know, is lovely. It adds another layer of family abuse here. He also has some pretty good lines in season 10, and you know he always does, but I'm just going to play this one from the World of Warcraft episode. My friends, to victory! To victory! I don't play World of Warcraft. Butters, you said you're on your computer all the time. Yeah, but I'm playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure. I will say, though, in general, season 10 isn't the most buttery season. So, you know, not a ton to talk about in that season, like I said in the beginning. So this is another Cartman and Butters episode, and, uh... This one's pretty horrific. So the plot of this one is that Cartman basically uses Butters as his little test rat for his depraved, disgusting photography pieces. And this, of course, is during his sleep without his knowledge. Kyle tries to let Butters know what's going on, but you know, Butters, uh... Wait, wait, I can't let this happen. Butters? Yeah, Kyle? Don't you think it's a little strange that Cartman keeps asking you to stay over? Kyle? What do you mean? I mean that it's... What he means is that he's jealous that you've taken his place as my new best friend. But grow up, Kyle. Change is a part of life. Yeah, grow up, Kyle. <sighs> Once again, Kyle standing up for Butters shows that he at least kind of cares about Butters and that he probably considers Butters to be a friend. I will say Butters just dismissing Kyle was not my favorite moment from a writing standpoint, but it does fall in line with his manipulatable nature, especially by people like Cartman. So it's not too out of character, but I just didn't love that. So Cartman then sucks Butters' wiener and takes a picture of it. God. And then he tells his friends, proudly. You put a guy's wiener in your mouth, that makes you gay, stupid. 
-uh. But yeah, the goodwill for Butters seems to disappear from the boys after he kind of blew Kyle off. So they then suggest that Cartman should have Butters suck his wiener and that would cancel out the gayness. Of course, Cartman does this and, uh, well... Butters! Uh what are you doing? I'm getting a surprise. Oh my god, my, my only son reduced to this. Hey, where'd Eric go? Butters, how long have you been doing stuff like this? Like what? Don't lie to me, Butters. I know your secret now. No, wait, wait. It's okay. It's okay, Butters. This isn't a serious problem. You're just bi-curious. What's bi-curious? You are. I think it's pretty funny that Butters' dad sends him the conversion therapy even though... He wrestles with men, so you know. But obviously, Butters doesn't even realize what's going on here because he was blindfolded. And when he's being told that he's confused, he agrees because he he is confused. He doesn't know what's going on. So he goes to this conversion camp, and in this sort of Kafka-esque way, he doesn't really fully grasp why he's there. He gets this accountability buddy named Bradley, and he's told to keep a watch on him. This is where Bradley gets caught with homosexual material, and Butter shows off his beautiful innocence that he is known for. You know this is strictly forbidden. I don't understand. What's wrong with underwear? What's wrong? This is what makes you confused. Don't you get it? This is confusing you right now, isn't it? Yes, it's all very confusing. After this, they're sentenced to punishment, and him and Bradley are, you know, just writing out scripture, and Butters encourages Bradley, and, you know, has that positive attitude that he always has. This, of course, leads to Bradley having a crush on him, but Butters doesn't seem to recognize this. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Bad thoughts. Bad thoughts. What's the matter? I think I... I, I think I like you. Well, I like you too, Bradley. You do? Yeah. You like like me? Sure, I like like you a lot, lot. <laughs> He's so adorable. And I know I said this like seven times already in this video, but God, I don't know what else to say. He's so freaking adorable. So Bradley goes to jump off a bridge and Butters ends up making a very, very nice speech to get him off. Get back. You're just as confused as he is. All right. All right, that does it. I am sick and tired of everyone telling me I'm confused. I wasn't confused until other people started telling me I was. You know what I think? I think, baby, you're the ones who are confused. Yeah. I'm not going to be confused anymore just because you say I should be. My name is Butters. I'm eight years old, I'm blood type O, and I'm bi-curious. And even that's okay. Because if I'm bi-curious, and I'm somehow made from God, then I figure God must be a little bi-curious himself. I think... I think I'd like to come down now. His backbone to stand up for what's right is something that's been there from the very beginning. But it's just always nice to see these speeches and these episodes. It never gets old for me. Unknowingly, Butters made a stance here. And he didn't really mean to make a stance, but he did. And he inspired Bradley and, uh... His father, too. Looks like you're never gonna change. No, I like being bad curious. Well, you know something? So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now I am confused. But yeah, I love that ending. And while Butter's father really does suck, at least he's a bit more secure in his bisexuality now, eh? This is another period where Butters, while getting prominent roles, doesn't necessarily expand his character that much. So I am lumping it for that reason. So in Imagination Land, we see Butters is a very creative boy. And we also see a vision of how he views his father. We also see him show a tad of unpleasant behavior in the list where he bullies Kyle for being ugly. Moments like these become more and more common as his character develops. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's part of the reason why... I lose a bit of my love for Butters as the show goes on. Though I still love the guy. He's still adorable. He's still he's still wholesome and he's still pure at this point, but moments like these kind of bring him down a little bit. I'm um, for me. This is my personal opinion, of course. I much prefer seeing Butters in a sweet, caring way rather than in an unpleasant way, which I do think he becomes more and more unpleasant as the show goes on albeit he's still very generally sweet and this is a very minor blemish but i do think that it becomes more and more common and eventually it does culminate 
and I'll tell you when that happens. But like I said, he's still pretty sweet. Like in Tonsil Trouble, for example, we see Butter's sweet nature after he comforts Eric about getting AIDS. How you doing, Eric? You know, I think you're a real special little guy. And even though you have AIDS, I ain't gonna act any different towards you. God damn it, this sucks ass! He's still very much a sweet kid, and probably sweeter than he ought to be. We still have him in that punching bag role, and that doesn't change with episodes like Britney's New Look and Canon on Strike illustrating that. I said what what? In the butt. 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 But yeah, nothing worth fully diving into in this period. So Super Fun Time is another Eric and Butters plotline, and once again, I do think that this is a step towards a more assertive Butters. So we start off the episode with Cartman and Butters being forced to pair up for a field trip. Who else needs a partner? So Butters and Cartman, along with everyone else, are instructed to hold their buddy's hand, and Cartman obviously has instant objection to this. But unfortunately for him, Butters is dead set on listening to the teacher here, almost to an extraordinary extent. Cartman ends up dragging Butters to an amusement park against his will. And uh, I, I mean, I don't know if that's the exact term for that type of place. I think it's like amusement park, arcade type place. I don't know what it's based on. It's probably based on like a real thing. So apparently it is based on a real thing. It's called Celebrity Sports Center and it was in Denver and Matt and Trey went there. And basically it's just like a fun center type thing. Uh, basically how they depict it in the show. Just thought it was an interesting piece of trivia. Uh, yeah, back to the show. But instead of letting go, Butters continues to hold his hand throughout. Aw, aren't you too cute holding hands? Are you special little buddies? No! We eventually see the police at the field trip for other reasons that do not include Cartman and Butters, and we see Butters blame himself for Cartman's bad actions. Oh my god, the police are looking for us! Shh, Butters! We're gonna get it now! Butters, Butters, calm down! I know a way out of this! You just got me busted forever! <laughs> Butters, listen to me, listen! <laughs> no! All we have to do is sneak back inside without the cops seeing us. Then we can say we were inside all along. You said they wouldn't notice we were gone. You promised. <laughs> so I think this episode is interesting because yes, he is more assertive. He is like, I am not letting you push me around Cartman, which, you know, is definitely something I don't think he'd do in the early seasons, like season three, season four, season five, season six. But it's also interesting because of where his priorities lie in this episode. So instead of just letting go and telling the teacher, that Cartman tried to sneak out and go to Super Fun Time, he continues to hold his hand and listen to that first instruction. This is obviously very cute, very funny, and it makes for a really good episode, but I just think it's an interesting thing to observe. Back on the assertiveness point here, I'd like to add that this is the most aggressive Butters has been in defending his standpoint against Cartman up to this point. Like, Butters did have his moments of aggressiveness up to this point, but the way that he tries to impose his will on Cartman and refuse him, albeit unsuccessfully, is something that we haven't really seen in the show besides in this episode or before this episode. Aggressiveness and assertiveness are not the same thing. And while we've seen Butters be assertive from the very beginning at certain points, albeit at a much lesser rate than now, aggressiveness has been pretty rare for him. And I think that this episode, he is much more aggressive than he's ever been. I'm only setting up this angle now because eventually, and in some episodes in the future, they do lean into aggressiveness. But in this moment, that aggressiveness does come from a pure place. That aggressiveness comes from the want to do something right and do the right thing and be morally correct. So it's not like it's a bad thing in this episode. There's a few episodes I felt like going into here and a couple that I almost made individual dives on, but I ended up deciding against. But anyway, let's just go into it. I'll start with the China problem, which is is an awful episode. I mean, it's a good episode, but it's just terrible. Oh my God. So this is yet another Cartman and Butters episode. And this time Cartman convinces Butters that the Chinese are out to get him. So the only logical way to stop the Chinese from infiltrating is... Uh, to pretend to be one of them. 
Uh, yeah, you know where this, you know where this is going. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good one, Pingling. <laughs> so, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the invasion plan. <laughs> invasion plan. What day is America invasion again? I forget. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Yes, sir. These people won't leave us alone. Yeah, so basically this episode ends out in a shootout where Butter shoots a bunch of people in the dick on accident. And of course, Carmen has a problem with this because he knows what is moral. He's a very moral guy, you know. Butters gets coerced. Cartman treats him like his lackey. Yada, yada, yada. A story we've heard time and time again. One episode I did think about talking about more in depth, but I didn't end up doing, was The Ungroundable. So in this episode, we see Butters forgiving, loving home life on display once again. You see this, Butters? It's a glass of milk I poured for myself. And you see this? It's Hamburger Helper. Now, would you mind telling me what Hamburger Helper is doing in this glass of milk? Why is Hamburger Helper in a glass of milk, Butters? I have no idea, sir. I'll tell you why. Our pantry is always kept organized alphabetically. But somebody put the Hamburger Helper where the Nestle Quick is supposed to go. So Butters decides he's had enough and he becomes a vampire kid. So Butters shows off his scaredy cat trait once again as he believes these vampire kids are real vampires who drink real blood but he still goes over to them anyways now the reason why i decided against going into this episode individually is because if you think about it it isn't really new for butters i mean if you really think about it and you really align these episodes it's kind of just like the professor chaos arc so i decided against it i mean he does try to eat cartman so i'm that's interesting Butters? Butters? I can't do it! I can't do it! Dude, gross, you got spit all over my neck, man! Butters just gave me a hickey! Dude! You alright, sweetie? Yeah. Ow. What's going on? Well, Mom, apparently Butters is gay, finds me very attractive, and confused about his sexual identity puked up all over my floor. Oh dear! Yes. He eventually becomes groundable again, and uh, he gets grounded. So in the coon, we see the return of Mr. Chaos himself, and I really like that they kept his alter ego for the superhero spinoffs. I think Professor Chaos is just iconic, and I'm glad that they didn't touch it or tried to give him a new superhero identity. This one is definitely worth talking about. So Butters Bottom Bitch is interesting because you'd think an episode where Butters literally becomes a pip, pip, becomes a pip, becomes a pimp, it would really mess with his pure perception, which it does, it definitely does, but it doesn't do it as much as you'd think. So we start off the episode with Butters getting bullied by the other school children, which seems to suggest he is still very much lovable loser Butters, even as he continues to grow. You know what we just found out? Well, it turns out that Butters, our Butters, has never kissed a girl. Oof. So Butters ends up paying a girl to get that kiss, and while Kyle tries to tell him not to, of course he doesn't really listen to him. It's weird because Butters seems like the most suspicious of Kyle, even though at this point, I'd say that Kyle cares the most about Butters over anyone else. I don't know. It's partially just kyle's nature to be like that but also i think that he genuinely cares about butters kyle analysis uh i'll wait a bit on that one that one is gonna actually take longer than this video so um and this one took a long time so uh, oh hamburgers so butters gets the kiss and being the business mind that he is starts a pimping business now remember when i said that it doesn't completely ruin his pure image that's because of the way he runs his business which is it's still very cute. I got a kissing booth set up at the kids' fair on Saturday, so Kaylin, Ashley, you take turns there. Any girl that sells more than 20 kisses gets a little sunshine. But if you don't show up for work at all, I'm afraid you get a stormy cloud. This is gonna be great. So Butters is doing his thing, but then he comes across a pimping convention where he is taught how to be a pimp, which he sticks on like glue. Problem with this advice is that it kind of makes him a douche but i will say it's forgivable since you can clearly see he's just parroting the advice rather than doing it on his own volition see it's all about mind control you gotta act a part any man can control a bitch's heart but a pimp gotta control a bitch's mind know what i'm saying 
I know what you're saying. Oh, hell, Dad. I got lots of girlfriends. Sally's just my bottom bitch. Do you know what I am saying? But Butters does have moments in this episode where I question whether or not it's a turning point for him and his character. Like he references the fact that he has to grow up and become a man. Either way, by this point it seems the writers were more set in making Butters a bit more malicious, a bit less pure, a bit less innocent, and while it was definitely trending that way before, and I stated as such, if I had to point to an episode where I'd, I'd have to say the transition between him being a purely great kid to being a more morally ambiguous one ended, I'd say it was this episode. This is the episode where that transition ends. Now, I'm not saying he always is portrayed this way. I'm just saying that past this point, past this episode, whether or not Butters is going to do the right thing isn't as safe as a bet as it used to be. Of course, this is assuming that he wasn't manipulated into doing the wrong thing like he's been in the past multiple times. They seem to want to have it both way with Butters, where sometimes he's a bit more edgy, a bit more malicious, and other times he's pure and innocent. And past this point, he does a lot more bad things on his own accord rather than being manipulated into doing them. Before this point, the amount of times Butters has done immoral things have been kind of limited to like small comments and small gestures. But after this point, there are some morally ambiguous things he does do. Now you could argue that's the pimp's fault and you could count the advice as maybe a form of manipulation since you know it wasn't 100% on his own will. And obviously the advice that the pimps gave certainly had a role in the way Butters, you know, transformed. But I think that this episode was crucial for developing Butters as more of a malicious, less pure, more aggressive character. The ending of this episode does show that Butters still has a pure heart, and I'm not saying that this episode changed his character, I'm just saying that this episode more solidified trends that were happening with his character, and I think that solidification is important, and that's why I go into great detail about this episode. By this point, you get the idea of me lumping certain episodes together, so I'm just going to jump into it. In Dances with Smurfs, we once again see Butters acting unfavorably and being a little bit of a devil. Butters gets a sizable role in the episode, The Tale of Scrody McBoogerballs, where the boys make him the fall guy, but it ends up backfiring. Well, Butters, we think that this is one of the best books we've ever read. Huh? What? Yeah, really amazing. Orders doesn't let the boys push him around past that first point, and he pushes back against their claims. This leads Butters to write another book where it's clearly not as offensive as the first one, and this shows that even when he's trying to be as offensive as possible, he still very much has that childlike nature. It's still a major part of who he is. In Poor and Stupid, we see Butters end up being Cartman's little lackey once again. In the Coon Trilogy, we see Butters portrayed as Professor Chaos, Albeit, he doesn't get much screen time because he's trapped in a cage the whole time. Season 15 has a couple of prominent roles for Butters. In City Sushi, we see Butters once again put in a situation he doesn't understand when he gets diagnosed with multiple personality disorder for uh, being a normal child, pretty much. The person who diagnoses Butters is genuinely insane, so that leads to some hijinks and Butters is left to deal with that. In an interesting twist, that person ends up being Lou Kim, which is kind of funny. You wanna take over my shitty walk? Holy crap, what time is it? Oh no, I'm right! In the episode The Last of the Mexicans, we see Butters get lost and end up in Mexico and attain full hero status as he inspires Mexicans to leave the United States as they were promised a life that never materialized. I think there are a few things to mention with this episode. Like when he ends up in Mexico, we see him revered and adored, but he still decides to leave. Now I find this interesting because even when he has a chance to go to a life with people who treat him and praise him with admiration, he still chooses to return back to his home, back to his family and friends who don't really treat him that well. Now you can interpret this in a few ways. One might call this decision stupid because come on butters, get out of there man. But mainly we see that even though he has a difficult life back at home, he still values it. And he values it more than he ought to, but this is still a pretty positive look for butters. 
So this episode is pretty uncomfortable. I mean, it's not necessarily bad, but it's, it's uncomfortable, all right? So in this episode, we see that Butters is getting bullied pretty badly. So that's not too outside the realm of his character. But as the episode goes on, we come to find out it's his grandma who's doing the bullying. This isn't new for Butters, but the fact that he doesn't have a single supportive family member is just... It's so messed up. Not even one. He can't even have one single family member that supports him. At the school, we see Stan try to lead a campaign for Butters against bullying, but this isn't what Butters wants, and it's honestly kind of embarrassing. Hey, can I not do this, please? I don't want to do this. Ah, oh, Butters, you ruined it. This is all one big long shot and you ruined it! Yeah, I wouldn't want to be put in a glass cube naked either, Butters. I can't blame you. So, from all angles, we see that no one really cares about Butters. Even the people that supposedly support him are using him, and the people who are against him, like his grandma, obviously, she's just bullying him. He even gets brought on a talk show against his will, and this leads him going off the wall. What else do you want to say, Butters? Please, leave me alone. Leave him alone! But that doesn't work, does it, Butters? No, it doesn't. Tell us in graphic detail what the bully does to you. Stop it. Come on, this is for America. Do you realize that in America, oh, over 200,000 students are afraid to go to school because of bullying? Don't you care? You better care. Aggressiveness is once again very present here, and it's clear that he feels frustrated by the fact that no one really wants to listen to him. All of this is very understandable in this episode, by the way. I just don't think he'd react like this in the early seasons. I just wanted to mention it because I think it's a pretty good image of where his character is at at this point. By the end, we see Butters give this beautiful speech to his grandma, showing that he has a bit of flair and passive aggressiveness. I finally stood up for myself. I got real mean and I beat the snot out of Dr. Oz. I can't lie, it felt kind of good at first. But since then, all I have is this kind of dark, empty feeling. And then I realized that's how you must feel all the time. Poor old grandma. You know, I I've been getting lots of advice how to deal with you, stand up to you, tell on you. But I kind of realized there's just people like you out there, all over the place. When you're a kid, things seem like they're gonna last forever, but they're not. Life changes. You won't always be around. Someday you're gonna die. Someday pretty soon. And when you're laying in that hospital bed, with tubes up your nose, and that little pain under your butt to pee in, I'll come visit you. I'll come just to show you that, that I'm still alive and I'm still happy. And you'll die. Being nothing but you. Grandma. This speech shows a bit of a more venomous side to Butters, a bit more passive aggressiveness. It's incredibly satisfying though, because instead of him just hurting her in the way that she hurts him, we see him obliterate her with the truth. And sometimes truthful obliteration is the harshest thing you can do to someone. I mean, I do have to talk about this one, don't I? So I've been talking about Butters' increased level in aggressiveness, assertiveness, maliciousness, but Butters just goes off the handle in this episode. So the plot reason for this is that Butters has something in his DNA as a native Hawaiian that makes him angry at a certain age, and he has to do a ceremony in Hawaii to fix his issues. Yeah, the plot sucks in this episode too, so, you know. There's a couple things of note here with his anger. One thing that's shown during this day is that he's actually self-aware of his condition, which I think is interesting. I don't know, Dad. I was just pissed off, I guess. Do you think this behavior is fair to your teacher and classmates? I don't suppose it is, but I don't give a darn! Also, it's not like he's completely angry at the whole world, as he still has it in him to be positive about Kenny, who ends up helping Butters in this episode. You guys think Carmen is the only selfish piece of crap at this school? You're all fake and stuck up, and none of you have the courage to tell Jimmy that his jokes aren't funny! The only kid here with any sense of dignity is Kenny, and the rest of you have your heads up your butts! That's one thing I kinda like about this episode, the fact that Kenny and Butters have a stronger bond, 
And giving Butters a strong bond with Kenny, that's nice, right? I believe Kenny is the most morally good character in the show, as I stated in my analysis of him. And Butters, while at this point is not a super great guy, especially in this episode, in the earlier seasons, I would also consider Butters to be one of the most morally good people in the show as well. It's just nice to see them in particular interact in a collaborative way. And I just think it's, I just think it's cute. But yeah, Butters is really awful in this episode. I mean, the dude literally killed a whole cruise ship of people. By the end, it is resolved and Butters is returned back to normal. But it was a really weird detour for him. And while yes, I understand that the writers were clearly experimenting with his portrayal and his character at this point. I think this was a major misstep since instead of actually expanding on any traits that may have been established before, they just kind of made him a different character for this episode, which I didn't really like. Not fond of this episode, but it was important for Butter, so that's why I mention it. Not a ton happens in this group of episodes, so I'm just going to run through the highlights real quick. He has a role as a paladin in the Stick of Troop episodes and games, and while there's a lot of Butters content in the game, obviously, I didn't feel like it was worth mentioning that much here. He does have a decent role in The Hobbit, where he is the catalyst for the episode, basically, because he turns on a girl because she's not Kim K. Oh, hold on, a date? Oh, no thanks, Lisa. I really appreciate the offer, but you're too fat for me. Okay, thanks. See ya, Lisa. You're so valid, Butters. Based Butters? Question mark? Question based Butters? <laughs> Guys, I'm just joking. Love fat people. Obviously, I mean, look at me. It'd be hypocritical for me to not, right? In gluten-free Ebola, he doesn't actually show up in the episode, but it is referenced that he burned the gym down, so you know, Mr. Arsonist Butters, I see. Like I said, uh, a lot more morally ambiguous now. In the sissy, he doesn't really do a lot, but I just want to include this funny clip. He's not a woman, he's not a man, he is something that you'll never understand, but he would die for me. Overall, his appearances tended to be more brief or lacking in new context in this section of the show, so that's kind of why I glossed over it. This episode is pretty iconic, as I think the concept of this episode is pretty cool. But we aren't talking about the episode, we're talking about Butters. So let's talk about Butters. Butters is tricked by Cartman into believing he's in virtual reality in this episode, and this leads to Butters doing a couple things he wouldn't otherwise do. I mean, who can blame him for that? Uh, I know I can't. Butters ends up getting into a whole lot of trouble, as he ends up getting a little too violent, and he fights a hooker, who probably stabs him. So Cartman, instead of just admitting he was fooling Butters, comes up with a scheme. It's going to be hard to understand, Butters, but you've become trapped in the simulation. None of this is real. What makes this episode interesting is that Carmen's not lying here. Whether he knows it or not, it isn't actually real. Now this does pose an interesting question of whether or not we can even include this episode because technically it's not real. So maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with Butters actions you know maybe we don't even include it because it's technically not real it's not even the real butters but then again kim kardashian literally dies in mick booger balls and then she comes back to life in the hobbit so maybe analyzing this show in general is just a bad move but i'm gonna do it anyway because i'm a loser with no life but i just mainly highlight this episode to show off butters impulses to a greater extent and while i'm not gonna use this episode to make him out to be a bad person because god knows what some of you guys do in vr probably a little worse than what butters does but it does show that butters has these impulses and he finds it entertaining to carry out these impulses Season 19 was a serialized season, and Butters doesn't get a ton, but there are a few things that do happen. I'm going to speak about seasons 19 and 20 in more general terms rather than episodic terms because that's kind of how the seasons go, so I'm going to be more general. So Butters, like I said, doesn't do much in this season, but he does get a girlfriend, a Canadian girlfriend named Charlotte, which ends up being important, especially for next season. We also see Butters go insane by trying to curate Cartman's social media. This leaves him in a head brace for the rest of the season. Well, I think the most major thing that's established in the season about Butters is his Canadian girlfriend, and that's 100% because of season 20. And oh, I got a lot to say about season 20. It's common knowledge that I really love this season. I just love the way that they portray Butter's character in this season. Oh, I just love it. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, I despise this season with all of my heart, but 
I must talk about it again because it is important for Butters. So, yay. So, in season 20, we see Butters change into this misogynistic, impure, aggressive, revolutionary leader type in response to this woman's movement of girls breaking up with their boyfriends. And obviously, this includes Charlotte, his Canadian girlfriend. While, yes, Butters has had his moments with these types of behaviors in the past, it's still incredibly jarring to see him go from 10 to 100 that quickly. And I say some because he's really never been a leader like he is in this season. He's still very much a naive follower, and even in cases where he was a leader, like when he was a pimp, we could see that he was still very much following advice rather than leading a literal movement. I think my major problem with his portrayal in this season is the complete loss of purity. Well, yes, he's become more assertive, more aggressive, hell, even more morally ambiguous, he has still maintained that purity with a few minor exceptions and one major one with going native. Now, he is returned back to normal by the end of this season, but even this is unsatisfying to me. He doesn't return back to normal because he's changed and become a better person, you know, really worked on himself. He becomes back to normal because he's fear-mongered by Bill Clinton into doing the right thing. Now, our only chance is to keep our heads low and act like we're changed men, because we're very close to the end. The end of what? Women are sick of our shit, son. And soon, they're gonna know everything we've said and done online. And unless we start kissing their asses, we're all gonna be put in a big chamber underground and milked for our semen. Now I have to question his sincerity as well, which is just great. As far as I'm concerned, this season is not canon and you can't do anything to change my mind on that. I'm taking this out of the canon myself and you can't stop me. If you want more ranting about season 20, check out my video about it, I'm, I'm done. Okay, so I will admit I was very biased in my season 20 section and I'm sorry. I, I guess I'm just I guess I'm just passionate. But I won't have such scathing critiques for the rest of the episode. I, I got it on my system. I'm done. So I lumped the episodes in these seasons together, not because I don't necessarily have a lot to say. It's more because I just view these seasons as very similar in my eyes, so I'm just gonna lump them together. In franchise prequel, we see the return of the icon himself, Professor Chaos, and he's actually causing some real chaos for once, that being spreading misinformation about the boys to cause them to not be able to get greenlit on Netflix, which is something. This episode does lead into the game, which Butters obviously has a pretty prominent role in, where he's the antagonist at certain points and he works with you at certain points but I'm not going to talk about the fractured butthole as much as I love it because this video is already too bloated if you want to see me talk about the game I have a review on that too craze elk the one-stop shop for any South Park video you want I have it all not all yet I don't have it all yet but I will I'm working towards it uh, I'm going to eventually have a character analysis on every single one of those characters including dog poo Pekinski. That's, is that his name? Dog Poo Pekinski? I don't know. I, I'll just flash it on screen. Uh, maybe I'm right. I don't know. Another episode that I think is worth talking about is A Boy and a Priest, because I think that this episode really highlights the return back to purity, which I think is a good thing, obviously, for his character, but is important for his character, too. So in this episode, we see the town completely make fun of Father Maxi, and Butters, instead of following them, he shows compassion to the priest. I will say he's a tad misguided in his help, to be honest. Oh, there's Butters. Oh, hey, fellas. I hope you don't mind I brought a friend. Come on in. Ah, uh, hello, my children. Okay, so I, I guess I'm gonna go to the saloon and try to arrest Cartman. Let's see what you got, bitch. Butters doesn't seem to grasp how a fully grown man hanging out with children could be perceived as a little weird, but... You know, that's his naivety at play. Overall, he's really adorable in this episode, and it's very much a return to form for Butters. Also, in Band in China, we see he shreds on the guitar. But yeah, they definitely mellow Butters out a bit after the whole season 20 fiasco. So the post-COVID special tends to be an episode that I always cover in these character analyses for the obvious reason that going into the future says a lot about someone's character. Now the thing about this special that makes it kind of unique is that I technically don't really have to talk about that much of it because most of it takes place in an alternate timeline that's not real. But I'm going to talk about it anyway because a lot happens for Butters and 
I'm not lame. I'm going to cover it. I might as well. I've already covered everything else. So, but yeah, technically it's a different timeline. So keep that in mind. So in the alternate timeline, we see Butters revealed to be an absolutely bonkers NFT bro, which is really funny. Now Butters clearly shows a lot of signs of baggage, which is expected. And we see this in his own characterization of himself and why he goes by a different name now, that being Victor Chaos. Butters, we're here to ask you about Kenny. Sorry guys, you have me confused. I think Butters was a trippy little loser kid whose parents didn't love him. My name's Vic, Vic Chaos. Butters obviously has a lot of issues, and he also keeps a lot of his childhood mannerisms, like peeing at the urinal with his pants all the way down and stuff of that nature. It's kind of like this at the end of the real timeline too, you know, that childlike nature. So I guess it's fair to say that he kind of never loses that childlike innocence, even as an adult. He's shown to be a great salesman and wreck havoc as he escapes the psych ward to spread information about NFTs. Another thing retained from childhood is Cartman's ability to manipulate Butters, which we see happen as Cartman tries to keep his family together. Well, you got the wrong guy, Mr. Cartman. My name's Vic, Vic Chaos. Your name is Butters, and I wanna know how you're helping Cal. Oh, you mean the guy from the asylum earlier? Sure, he gave me a piece of paper so I could escape. Nice guy. Why don't I get you two together, maybe for a little chin wiggle over lunch or something? God damn it, Butters, stop playing games! My entire family is in danger of being wiped out. And I swear to God, if you don't help me, Butters, I will rip your fucking balls off with my bare hands! Oh, hamburgers. In the end, we see that Butters in the real timeline is a Denny's manager, which, well, less lucrative than being a scam artist. Hey, respect, man. Most importantly, unlike before, he seems to be happy, which is the ultimate goal in life, right? That's, that's all that matters here. Cheers to happiness. It's what we all aspire for, right? So here we are, the final stretch. God, I'm so ready to be done with this video. I mean, I've had fun. I've had fun making it. I, I enjoy being a YouTuber, but man, the amount of man hours on this one. Oh my God. I'll start with Back to the Cold War, where Butters has a pretty prominent role as a little horse rider. In another episode, he gets into a little legal trouble when he pinches a girl for not wearing green on St. Patty's Day. Look, I know. It's St. Patrick's Day, right? If people don't wear green, they get pinched. Yes, right. Yeah, only one problem. The little girl you pinched, Kellyanne Barlow, she was wearing green socks. <laughs> you're a goddamn sexual predator. Well, honestly, you know what? She deserves it. Screw you if you're one of those people on St. Patrick's Day who are like, oh, well, I'm wearing green socks, tea. And shut up. Shut up. You, you, you don't count. Okay, you're you're invalid. In Worldwide Privacy Tour, we see Butters manipulated into being a less than desirable person because people told him to improve his brand. And last but not least, I'm gonna talk about Dick and Boss hot dogs. Where do we see Butters in the current day? Well, he's still getting pushed around by Cartman. This episode does a few things. First, it definitely hurts Kenny and Butters' friendship in my eyes, since Kenny was kind of complicit in using Butters for his own gain alongside Cartman. This eventually leads to Butters taking charge, getting the business off the ground by himself, which much kudos to him for that. He's a pretty hard worker here, and I don't know if that's an angle that's been developed that much besides in this episode, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Butters is a lovable dope, and as much as I think he has a few blemishes, he's still pure old Butters, and at the end of the day, what would I do without him? His existence makes the show so much better, and I honestly do not think South Park would have lasted as long without him in it. Butters is a uniquely wholesome spot in a show known for its obscene nature, and I think he's just a special little guy. Butters, like everyone else, has room to grow, and I'm really curious to see where the writers are gonna take him in this next season and seasons to come. I can't lie, a part of me does really miss that old classic Butters, but I have to appreciate the amount of smiles that he's put on my face as a character, and you know what? Overall, he's still all right, I guess. You know, I still like him. Thank you guys for watching. Like I've mentioned a few times in this video, this really did take me a very long time to make. So please press that like button. Please subscribe. Please do whatever you need. Comment. And I, I'm, please, if this video does not do good, I'm going to like cry and eat a ton of ice cream. And you see, I'm trying to lose weight. 
So you would be responsible for me gaining weight. You don't want that. It's not my job as the creator to get people to watch my videos. It's your job as the viewer. Don't you understand? Obviously, I'm mostly joking there, you know, but if you guys did like the video, I would appreciate it if you liked it. Thank you guys for everything. Really, I mean it. And, um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate you guys being here. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>